the setup for Evla. When we are talking about Evla, this is the stillet which is actually advanced into the needle, uh, into the target vein. So under the USG guidance, we trace the vein and it goes inside. Once it goes inside, we have this guide wire which is advanced via this. So the guide wire will go inside and then you withdraw your uh, stillet. And then this is the sheath that we have. So the sheath will do the dilatation and basically this is the sheath catheter. So this will go inside and via this you can see there is an attachment with a two way cannula, three way can, two way basically. This is a three way sorry. So this is used in case if you want to do a perforator sclerotherapy and via this, via this the radial fiber will go. I will show you how the radial fiber goes. You can use the whatever. So it has a preset mode for Ebola, Fistula Nano. I have just customized it. So once you press on this, you can see the 8 watt settings is displayed. The timing is this is a timed pulse. You can say intensity modulated. So this is going to be 8 second. You can do a continuous monitoring also. So this is the laser fiber that we have. Now you can see why it is known as a radial laser fiber. If you see it is 360 degree. Yes, this is, there are two kinds of fiber. We have a bare fiber. This is a radial fiber. And when this goes inside and then you press the pedal. Now currently it is on a standby mode. To start it, you have to remove the standby mode. And then this is the pedal. So once you press the pedal, so you start withdrawing it. And the standard rate of withdrawal is 1 mm per second. And once you withdraw it, actually this is going to heat up the vessel and it is going to cause the scleros, you can say uh, endothelial sclerosing and thus the vein get collapsed. You need to put a mechanical compression with the help of a stocking or a very, or you can say a grip bandage and this is how done. So this is a radial fiber which is actually used in this process also and it is also used for filac also. Thank you. I am going to demonstrate you how to do a tesaris technique. So this is sodium tetradecyl sulfate also known as cetrol. It is 2 ml. So what we will do, we have a standard ratio of mixing air with the gas, uh, with the drug. So we will take that. So we will take this 2 ml into the syringe. And remember it has to be a ratio of 4 is to 1. So take a 3 way cannula, attach and attach one empty syringe. So this is almost 2 ml and we will take 8 ml of syringe here, air. And now what we are going to do, we are going to generate the foam. So you can see this is oxalating. Gently it is done. And this is what is known as a tesaris technique. This is what is a tesaris technique. Now the ideology is when you mix the air with the drug, the foam is generated. Now you can see a thick foam has been generated. Okay. Generated. We have taken the foam. Now we'll trace the vessel. So since these are less than 2 mm vessel, we are going for the tissaris foam. So it has gone inside. And we are going to push it. Remember when you push it, always try to milk it out. Same way, we are going to take one more vein. And same way, we are going to push some more sclero sent into this. Again, once you do this, ensure that you milk it out. Hold it, hold it.
just see the sclerosant is going at a time 1 to 2 ml not more than 10 to 12 20 ml per sitting patient might complain of some burning paresthesia remember reticular veins are the veins which are less than 3 mm but more than 1 mm 